Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to Something to Wrestle With. Bruce Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard, what is going on? Are you done yelling at me? Hello? All you have done, you got on the phone, you got on this little contraption thinking thing that we have here, and all you've done is yell at me. Okay. Are you done? Nope. I'm just getting started. Oh, uh, hell. We have what missed you. No, man, you don't call anymore or nothing. It's like I sit around and I just, I wait, I wait, faded breath, and I go, man, I, I wonder if he's ever going to call me. I mean, at least see how the fuck I'm doing. I don't know, you know, something. You are. The got, biggest... barbecue, got, got barbecue smoking out on the Smiths Ochre today. Riz. Wait, wait, I thought you were a damn Yazanki. How far from it, kid? Far from it. Well, you, you're up there eating your hard rolls. No, nah, man, got some, um, got some, not baby backs. I got spare ribs. See, I'm an old school guy. I like, I, I was eating spare ribs before they had these damn baby back commercialized ribs. I, I just want pork spare ribs. See, I thought you would they be a big love. rib guy they since you're a Texas guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, simple, simplicity. Simplicity. I like it. We'll go with that. Hey man, people are just excited that you and I are recording. Thank you for taking the time. I know it's been we're what? Oh, are we not supposed to be? What? Never mind. It's just you and I having a casual conversation. No. Let's do it. Hypothetically, is this one of the craziest years of your entire career? You know, uh, let's call it exciting, man. It's exciting times. It's it's a time in life for which I think that people take life for granted sometimes and take things happening around you for granted. And it's all in how you look at life and you can either love life, live life, or you can hate life and you can just exist. So I choose to, I, there was times in my life that I chose the latter, but I choose the former. I would rather go ahead and live life and enjoy it because life's a journey not a destination. And remember the light at the end of the tunnel, maybe you. Well, what the fuck are you doing right now? What, are, are you just gassed up? Are you, have you not slept? Like what? Hot, wet, dip, runny, what do you say? I got a brand new record that I got to play. She says, not now, boy, but I did anyway. Cause I'm ready. So ready. Ciao. You're just excited to be back and buddy, we are too. I can't believe it's really happening. We're recording a, uh, a new piece of content here today. We're going to be talking Bret Hart's 1994 and Bret Hart's 1995. And man, I'm pumped for that. But I got to tell you, break the rules. What, what you, okay, go ahead. I'm like, I see. I'm, I haven't talked to you forever. I just want to talk. And, and it's like, I feel like I'm jumping all over you and just cutting you off, but go ahead. I'm sorry. You're not cutting me off. I'm excited that you're able to record. But listen, before we talk about the old stuff, I know we don't talk about the new stuff. I'm not going to put the screws to you on anything new. However, it does feel like if you wanted to say anything at all to your loyal and faithful audience that has tuned in with their fingers crossed every Friday for an extended period of time, I haven't heard from you. Is there anything you would like to share or talk about or discuss? You know what? I, I, I think that. More than anything, thank you. Thank you, and I do love you. I really and truly do. No, that's not a gimmick. I love you. I actually like you and love you and appreciate you. The fact that you would actually continue to come in and listen to some of our megasodes that we have put together that are like, holy cow, we said that? We did that? <laughs> you know what? Um, so thanks for hanging in there, and time's been crazy, and as I said earlier, it's a period in time that will go down um, is one of the pivotal points um, in in the world in which I have existed in the last uh, damn near sixty years. So it's it's pretty crazy, but you know it, it's you, you want to bite your tongue. At least I do. I, I have to bite my tongue. I, I can't come out and and say things when p- things are reported incorrectly or just out and out falsehood and out and out lies. And sometimes it really irritates me and sometimes it it doesn't. And I'm not in a position where I can really comment on some of those, 
but it's for those that choose to be negative and want to believe the negative, then you're a negative person and that's what you're going to do. So have at it. I'm not going to try and change anything else. But I do have to say, because it's something that people even internally would come to me with and, and make comments about that, that I was writing NXT, that I changed <laughs> NXT and that I was writing NXT. And I never said a word. Yeah. You know what else I never did, Conrad? What's that? I never wrote one NXT show in the history of my existence. Right. I am a fan of NXT. I love NXT. And Shawn Michaels recently came out and talked about how, no, it's been me. It's been me since day one. And I think Shawn has done a tremendous job of grabbing NXT by the horns and doing what he's done. And I love Shawn Michaels to death. But the fact that Shawn finally came out and said, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> you know, no, I never have. So to those pundits out there, the dirt sheet writers that reported as fact, not, hey, rumors are. No, they reported as fact that I had been involved in NXT and doing all that stuff. The, the fact of the matter is that uh, they were 100% just fabricated lie from where? I don't know. And so now that they've heard it from two different sources that are actually there, that actually know, um, they should probably consider their sources or just stop making things up. And that's there. That's I just, I, I just found it so funny when in an interview, so many different things going on. And Shaw said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and comment on that just because uh, so many people like were dying on that soapbox and wanted to, uh, have my head. And then it's those who want my head going to want my head. Hey man, or have at it. But, uh, no, I love what I do. I love, uh, where I'm at, what I'm doing with whom I do it with. So, uh, get over it, man. It's not all about what you think you perceive. Reality is reality and perception can be reality too. But when your reality is based on a perception that you have no idea about, that's just wrong. It does feel like at times wrestling fans, you know, we do have an, an, an insatiable thirst for more information about how the sausage is made. And there was a lot of jokes this past summer about, oh, WWE is like an HBO episode of succession or, or whatever. And so we get this sort of, I don't know if paranoia or conspiracy theory is the right way to do it, but it does become a little bit humorous to see where people sort of jump to some of these conclusions. And for instance, you know, while you and I don't really ever talk about stuff and I just know you're so, you were so consumed with main roster stuff. You weren't doing anything with NXT, but it's, it's cool that some of that is coming to the surface now. And, and I can't help, but think five or 10 years or whenever from now, when the story of these last couple of years, starting at the pandemic to now, this has to be one of the most. I use the term exciting, but it's gotta be just unusual. Like it's unlike any other stretch of time in wrestling history, not just WWE, but wrestling history. Right. I think kind of when you look at it in business history in a lot yeah. of respects yeah, and to be a part of it, it is huge. And, and, you know, one day it, it's like, people don't even understand the role and, and I won't get into it because it isn't anyone's business, but even the role in, which I'm involved. So it's, um, oh yeah, it's a great time, man. It's, it's exciting as hell. And to the, um, people in the self-proclaimed wrestling media that have never actually been inside of a wrestling company or understand, uh, or even in, inside of a corporate, you know, <laughs> a major corporation to understand how things are done it's it, it amazes me the the things that they can get away with reporting as fact and reporting as is so um that's it man that's you know that's that's where i'm at and i'm happy as can be to tell you the truth so um 
Not that I wasn't telling you the truth before. I just went through. Oh, we know what you mean. Before, because I go through the grand jury thing about, well, to be quite honest with you, well, Mr. Pritchard, we would hope that you would be quite honest with us in all of your responses today since you are under oath. Um, so, yeah, I try to watch that. 